we're going to do in this video is show you how simple it is to get started using the rest destination that's part of task factory you can see here that we have a very simple setup we have a flat file source with a couple of rows of data and a couple of columns that are part of that flat file source now it's important to keep in mind that for each row of data coming into the rest destination an execution occurs against this endpoint so for instance in this case we have two rows of data that means we're going to get this endpoint URL called two times now the cool thing here is that we have these token replacements and what these simply are is that for each column that is part of the input that data will get replaced at runtime and then the execution occurs so in this case what we have here is a, an input column replacement for ID and an input column replacement for name so at runtime these get replaced and then execution if you don't know the name of your column which is very common because a lot of packages have a ton of input columns you can simply type in curly brace curly brace and it will bring up all of the columns that you have available to you to use as replacements so in this case I'm just gonna hit name and there we go and that works also down here in the post data as well right there now another cool feature right here is that you have variable replacement so the pattern here to get all those to show up is left ang angle bracket ampersand and then you'll get all of the variables to show up and you can hit user hit enter there you go and so at runtime it's going to take whatever value of user token auth token replace it in the post body now you have post get put delete and patch right here so you can use any of these HTTP methods and also right here is the timeout the timeout is in seconds you can leave it to zero and it will have an infinite timeout infinite timeout all right so if we take a look at the headers the headers get replaced at runtime as well now the cool thing here is that you can have static you can have variable and you can have input column replacements just as well now we don't have the autocomplete here uh, we're going to get that here shortly but at the time of this video that's not in here and you're not limited by just having one replacement per header you can actually have a couple in here so if you needed some kind of pattern where you needed two of them you can do something like that and that will actually get executed like that at runtime all right so the next is the valid status codes now what this means is that for nearly all of your you know, endpoints 200 is going to be the only valid status code and what that means is that when you execute if you get out something other than a valid or a 200 status code something happened there was an error however there are some endpoints that allow you to use those uh, other error codes or status codes rather as valid status codes for instance if you had a 401 that you know that you wanted to process the same way as all the other valid responses you could put that right here otherwise anything other than a 200 is going to cause an error and depending on how you have your error handling set up it's either going to fail the component you can ignore it or you can actually redirect the row to the error output and there's another video showing you how to set up the redirect row but for now we're just going to leave it as fail component and finally we have test endpoint now this is pretty cool because what you can do here is you can actually take uh, your input columns and give it sort of just default or, or test values so we can see here that we know that we're using ID name and phone number here so we can come in here well actually before that I'll show you what happens if you hit test endpoint without doing any replacements or any uh, values here you're gonna see that it sent it in with none of the replacements have it haven't occurred you see phone number all that's right there now you come in here and you type in one two three four five and you can type in name and put in a phone number if you want to call this I don't think it's gonna to go to somewhere but have at it and you can hit test endpoint and look at that we got nice replacements occurring right there the other cool thing here is that if something is happening you're getting an invalid response you're getting uh, some sort of, of error coming back in your request you can actually look at your request here or sorry your response an error in your response rather you can look at your request here and see if everything is working correctly so we can see here that this was the endpoint that we called with the replacements in there this was the post or the uh, headers that we had with the replacements and here's the post body with the replacements. so if something's not working right you can take a look at the request and sort of determine what the heck is going on there now if you need more um, in-depth 
uh, debugging. You can use something like Fiddler and you'll be able to use it. So that's really it. That's how easy it is to get set up with the REST destination. Let's click OK here and look, what we're going to do is run this. Now when the destination runs, you can actually use this output here. If you don't need to use this, this is optional. You don't need to use this, but if you need to use it to determine uh, or to get some sort of response back from the server, you can actually use the valid output from it and handle that data. And what we see here is that it has a metadata of whatever input columns are being used and the execution results uh, in DTN text. Now, because I want to see this running or in the uh, metadata viewer, I'm going to use a data conversion, convert it to a DT string, and I'll, we'll be able to see that right here. So we're going to go ahead and run this. All right, so what we see here is that it's been executed twice, and here are the actual results that came back from the server. So we can see here, we have uh, the arguments, and we can see all the stuff that's happened or all the replacements that have happened. Here's some of the data. This is the uh, post data. Uh, here's the headers that got sent in as well. Uh, and we can see all that right there. So you see right there that you can set up the destination very simply. You can do input column replacements, variable replacements, and then you can get the response back from the server for every single row. And that's it. That's how simple it is to get set up with the REST destination.